Ship Happens, the show where crew tell their experiences of working on cruise ships, hosted by Jimmy Crew and Jolly Roger. Hello, welcome back, our fellow crew members and people who love to cruise, and uh, all our listeners that are out there, somewhat, someone on sea, someone on land. But uh, so I'm here with Jimmy and we're back for another episode and Jimmy will tell us what we're going to talk about today. Well, I thought today that we left on the last episode about when we first joined the cruise ship of the different types of languages that you learn by being on ship. I mean, I know a lot of sailors, there's a lot of sailors out there that know, you know, starboard side, port side, you know, whether they've been on little boats or yachts or big cruise ships, you know, so for me not having any experience of working on ships. And I think you also said that you've never been on a cruise ship before, right? Prior to this? Never, never. Yeah, it was a brand new experience. Like, I, f I felt like an alien there. It was uh, the, the <laughs> language, language, and we have like different different types of languages, but specifically this official uh, ship language that is like international. And this is, this is the language that is uh, across the globe, right? With the terminology. That we have star, right. as you, you mentioned, starboard side and port side, and this is so all the sailors from all over the world they will understand you if you when you say these things, right? Yeah, correct. So later on, I understood that you know starboard side and port side and other different emergencies are the same uh, due to maritime law. So no matter where you where you are, if there's an emergency, you're trained to be able to assist in a, in in some way. You know, if you if you pay attention in the classes. That you used to give, like I understand, you used to be in the training and development for uh, uh, on ships to train for many people years. Like, on the... Oh yes, right. And so I, I mean, was... if, if anybody knows, if anybody knows how complicated <laughs> it is to train all these people about like what what's uh, what do you do in case somebody jumps over, what in case there's a fire, so you have to learn all this language. So did you we actually any, had any... these trainings. Yes, uh, that uh, well, wow. actually, it was uh, uh, we have safety officer on the ship. Every ship they have safety officer. Uh, we, mm -hmm. he's pretty, pretty higher in ranks, uh, on the bridge, like there's the Correct, captain yeah. and you have staff, uh, staff captain. And just below that is like third in command. It's safety officer. Uh, or, right, uh right. I believe, cause I mean, they're the so, ones that, that make sure that everybody's in compliance with all it's emergencies. Very you're important. well trained to what to do. Yes. It's very important. And it's, it's crucial basically for you, to, for anybody to work on a ship. You need to know this because it's uh, life-saving, uh, knowledge. And then anything can happen on the ships. Uh, emergency can, you know, happen at any point, any second. You know, there's a fire is the most dangerous thing that can that can happen. And I'm sure you guys see this on news occasionally, and and it happens across the across the world all the time. Some small boat ships or some big cruise ships or cargo ships, oil the the, the transporter. We had this recently. This remember, uh, it was in uh, that canal in Egypt, uh, Suez Canal. Remember that right, last the, year, it was the ship was evergreen, blocking. Evergreen, yes, 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 evergreen. You know, and this again, thing, I mean that. I mean, it, everybody can point fingers at other people, but I mean, who knows exactly what the you know? I, I guess the nobody people knows. on board, you know, try to nobody knows, you know. And I guess you know, it was a little, it was an accident that turned into a big, big accident. So you know, I but guess that's they, the they point. See how. The that's depth, the point. That's, that's, why, that's the... why we try to explain new crew members that these kind of things can happen like any minute, any time to anyone. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it can happen to you and it can happen overnight. And you can, so you have to be trained as fast as possible. So you at least understand. Uh, yes. And I, I remember coming on board. Remember, I, mm -hmm. I, 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 I talked about the last episode that I was the last one on board because I thought it was just right. down, this, down the road. And I didn't know that crew members had to sign in, uh, sign on the ship to get uh, a basic training because obviously many of these crew members, it's their first time walking on a cruise ship and have no idea what it's like, like myself. So I had to well, take another- Well, let's start with the gangway. They, they, they call it gangway. And did you know what gangway is? I, I, didn't, I you, don't know. You did? I, I, I didn't. actually don't know to this day. What, what is it? Gangway is the entrance of the ship. You don't, you don't call it entrance. You call it the gangway. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's that oh, okay. door that, and a little bridge that come that right. takes you from the land to the ship there's like a little little bridge they, they the gangway okay gangway yes 
So, so that's one of the words that they say, oh, you can do going, it's by the gangway, or you're asking for direction, it's by the gangway. I'm like, what right. the hell is gangway? Well, yeah, you that know? was the first thing too, like coming yeah. up through the gangway, they said yep. like, okay, we'll meet you by the marshalling area. I'm like, yep. what is a marshalling area? Yeah. And they're like, oh, that's right. It's your first time on a ship. So the marshalling area is basically what we were talking about on the last episode too, that the, the, the gangway, like we're, uh, I mean, some ships is on deck zero. It's a whole entire floor that goes from the front of the ship to the back of the ship, and that's where all the luggage comes in, all the food, all the uh, uh, all the crew members. Uh, so it's they call it I ninety five because it's marshaling one of the area. Is, marshaling highways. area is is uh, is part of that I ninety five. Marshaling area is uh, is yes where you offload yeah. and unload the containers, the food, uh, uh, everything yeah. that needs to be unloaded is like a big and during big, port, big, during big port doors. Days, you're mm -hmm. not even allowed to pass through there because there's so much traffic you and you can get crushed by yep. the cranes or by the uh, people moving the luggage. So it's a it's it's a very dangerous spot to be if you're not paying attention. So that's one of the things that unless you're wearing a hard hat and you have permission to be in that area, you can have be there. So again, that's also something that I learned as well. You know, just got to look both ways. You know, when you're walking because it's it's a highway basically that you're walking yep. through. So True. that was that was one of the first words that I remember. Like, okay, we'll meet you by the marshaling area. It's like, what's the marshaling area? Oh, that's right. And, and then as a trainer, about... as a trainer, I can yes, tell you, like, uh -huh. there's there's so many, there's there's so many information that you need. I I as a trainer need to need to give uh, and inform, especially new crew members, the old crew members that are coming back. They just need to. They don't have as many trainings as the first time uh, contracts are, contractors. Uh, but uh, because they know you mean the most brand of the new, thing, brand new crew members, brand new, brand crew, new crew members, members, brand new crew members, yes. Uh -huh. right. And uh, so they, uh, but there's so many, so many trainings, but they're all necessary and they all need to be uh, uh, done and finished in the first week of being on board. Some of them have to be finished on the first day. Uh, the ship cannot mm. say, set sail. You remember this. The ship cannot set, set sail uh, before uh, old, old drill for the guests and for the crew. Uh, because guests as well need to be uh, uh, familiarized w in case of emergency where they need to go. So that's why every ship, right. before they set sail, they need to have this general drill. So each guest and each crew member, they need to, to, to take their life jackets or at least know where they are and then go to their spot in case the, of the emergency where they're going to be uh, boarding like, like life rafts or life boats right right, right. and for the so, guests you know they they learn the basic things when they're standing there waiting for the drill and all they have to do is just go to their muster station and that's basically that's, it for them but for crew members you have about you know an on average about a thousand crew members per ship on the small ones you know not, yes, not, to, say, not to mention the big ones so each one has a special duty that they have to uh, perform when they're on board you know some are in charge of a muster station like you know the the Guest services, you know, some of the basically uh, you have to help I the guess, guests, housing. guests mm -hmm. in case of emergency. Right. So, so we all have our different roles. Some of them are to guide the guests from their rooms to to do cor on corridors to their master station. Some of them to prepare the lifeboats. Some of them to prepare, uh, I don't know, some other things or or check the check the life uh, jackets or life vests and all this etc cetera, etc cetera, all these things. And then after most of the guests are in their master stations or or in the lifeboats then the crew are allowed to go to their own master stations and to own spots where they can be rescued right or or, or embarked in yes. the lifeboats and, and so this and, is just one lucky fragment. enough and be lucky enough to not be able to be stuck with an emergency the first week because they uh, they will oh, probably yes. forget everything that they just learned so you usually do you usually do it's so it's, <laughs> there's so many information that you need to memorize and then i, I Terminology. Back to terminology. Just, just to learn that alone, uh, it's it's crucial, right? Because what what is master station? What is you know lifeboat, life life uh, boy, or or any all these all mm -hmm. these. When you say it's on starboard side, your your master station is on starboard side. You, where is master starboard yeah. side? Nobody knows uh, where starboard is. Like, <clears throat> there's always these little how, tricks that we learn. Of how yeah, to yeah. Learn, how like, did you learn? How did you learn? Right? Well, for me, you know, it took me a while. And even to this day, sometimes I'm like, you're on the starboard side. I was like, no, that's the left side. Oh, my God, that's right. You know, so so basically, you know, if you're <laughs> facing the front of the ship and the on the left side, you'd have starboard side. And on the right side, uh, you would have port side, right? So when I'm on the ship, no, the right, side is, right side is the starboard side. Right side right. is the starboard side. Right, but if I'm facing from the front of the ship, so the front of the backwards. ship, yeah. 
Yeah, so if I'm walking on the ship going towards the bridge or going forward, right? Like yes. the, somebody told me, that, and that actually was the easiest way for me to remember. It's like, you know, I'm right-handed, so you hold your Starbucks on your right hand, right? So that's starboard side and then port yep. is on the other side. That's or true. there's yes, another true. one with where, where uh, yeah, so you, you have uh, Natalie Portman looking on the left side and then Natalie starboard side looking to the other side. So that's just like, <laughs> you know, funny ways to remember because it, it's hard, you know, no matter how many times you do it, you always get confused. But it's also important to learn these terminologies because in case of an emergency, they're going to say like, okay, all cabins that are uh, even numbers and uh, odd numbers, you know, they're also specifically uh, uh, situated in case of an emergency, you know. So obviously yes. the guests would be like, okay, I'm in, in an even ca odd number or, or even. So it makes it easier for, for the crew to organize and start directing people in case of an emergency. You have to because but all the, I, uh, you, as you said, all the announcements, especially in case of emergency, but even without, even on, you know, on a regular day-by-day -day basis, all the announcements that you hear around the ship, are using these words so they will say like okay in starboard side we can see this or we're gonna uh, get to the port and we're gonna uh, dock the star starboard side so you have to you actually have to know nobody will ever ever tell you right or left they will always say Correct. starboard exactly. or port so so there's no choice you have to learn uh, yeah. eventually and it's and it's difficult especially for the for, again for the new crew members it's very difficult and this is just one tiny tiny fragment this safety thing that Oh yeah, we have all trainings. The things. We we have trainings, you know, <laughs> once every other week, you know, or every other week. At the beginning, when uh when I first joined, I mean, it was basically two weeks of my training, uh, yep. as I mentioned, because I was going to be guest services. Uh, it was training about everything, because the guest services are actually uh, officers on board, which yep. they're in charge of of muster of a muster station. So we had to know everything that was available for emergency in our muster station, from the clickers to the paddles to the uh flare guns to what boat uh uh what uh lifeboats we were uh in charge of or or had to direct the uh the guests to so it's uh you know you you go more in depth in in case of an emergency than say somebody that just has to click the uh the guests that are in a muster station or that just has to d direct them to yep. the muster station right so yeah <laughs> we had to go more in depth when when it came to that and uh, uh, again more of the uh, training and language that comes with working on ships. You know, I also we have mm -hmm. some people. Some people also have to take the uh, what's the name of that training? The crowd in crisis survival or... at sea. Yes, but what's yes. it called? What's the actual crowd? Answer? Crowd crowd management and crisis crisis management. Uh, yeah, no, but uh, there's one that's the. Uh... Oh my gosh, it's it's on the tip of my tongue. But, you know, you it's get, the one that you get that certificate you have to, with that, with, with, for that. You get certificate for that. Correct. That you have to go in the water and you have to like learn how to open oh, up. Oh uh, yes, 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 yes. But this, this is done. Oh. This is done. This is done from the from the bridge from the that safety officers training, and right. Uh, and, and, and and they they do if you if your uh, duty during the emergency you are assigned to your duty that is to to be uh, be uh, on the lifeboat, so you have these trainings on how to drive. You know how to steer the lifeboat and this and this in case of emergency. So that those are the trainings that you that you're talking about, right? Uh, about life raft right, right. and lifeboat. I remember. I remember you. I actually remember people on our ship when we were together. They were doing this training with. There was this. Uh, uh, I think his name was Mario, safety officer. He was so funny and so, oh, such a nice I love, guy. Oh, I love Mario. Yeah, Italian. Him, yeah. yeah, and he was so funny, and he made these trainings fun, but but educational. You know, you you, you all passed. You have to pass. I mean, <laughs> your life depends on it. So, so this sure, is a. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember which which training you. This this was not part of my trainings. We did crowd uh, crowd in crisis. These are two uh, 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 requested trainings from uh, IMO International Maritime Organization that all sea seamen mm -hmm. uh, seamen all sailors so every ship, uh, not only cruise ship, they have these two trainings cer certified and pass. You, there's a test. So you cannot stay on the ship if you fail. You have, I think, I believe you have like two chances to pass this training once you're on board. That's right. And I just remember now that you mentioned that, uh, mm -hmm. Roger, uh, it's it's called the STCW. Yes, that's now true. Do you remember? Yes. STCW. STCW, yeah. STCW, yes. That's the book of all the laws and regulations from IMO, uh, International Maritime Organization. So, this no, is like it, that's a book actually of the, law. the training, the training. Well, that's, no, the, the STCW is the, is the training. Yeah, it's the basic training 
needed to uh to to i guess to work not not to work on shifts but if you have an important position that yeah. you're in charge the, of uh doors doors the stcw trainings the, the the names actually are crowd and crisis but uh, there's two separate trainings but uh but they're they're stcw trainings because it's yes, required and, and by which the stands law for it stands for it stands for standard for training certification and watch keeping so that's it's true for people that wow. on yeah i remember that I was and I remember I took I was always waiting for you to, to, to make a mistake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I always do. Wait for many more coming. No, but I remember because uh, that training, I took it here in Fort Lauderdale, which many of the officers on board actually do their training because they train you for fire safety, for uh, you have to right. be able to jump in, 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 a, in a pool and be able to save somebody from drowning. Were you in the Star a, Center? A, a, what's that? What, what, in the Star Center? Where did you do this training? I did this here in Fort Lauderdale. It's called MPT training, which uh, I know some cruise lines in, in Fort Lauderdale. It's in close to the port, Port Everly. Oh. Well, I, so, I, I, uh, I did I, my training. I, I was, I'm certified as a trainer and I spent uh, a week in Fort Lauderdale in Star Center. That's what it's called. It's like a military complex, oh, like Navy okay. complex. We, we stay there. We, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, they have the, all these simulators wow. and all these things. Yeah. And all most of the most of the, the, the sailors, or I don't know how how you how do I call all of us together, uh, hey, sailor. <laughs> sailors uh, go there, and every, everybody connected to 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 ships, right, and boats. They they can go there and they have this these huge simulators. Or the, we particularly we went for for trainers, so we need to learn how to present this training and how to make training and how. So I actually have certificate from Fort Lauderdale from Florida Star Center. That I passed, and only okay. after that I was allowed to to uh, train people on this. Right. I, yeah. So, so they're very serious about this, and this is international law. STCW, it's an international law, so it's required, and you cannot. If you fail, there's a test. If you fail that test, and you have to know all this terminology again, because all the questions are are in these words, right? That's why you need to learn this before you take the test. And you have like two to three weeks to, to pass these tests once you're on board. And it's so hard. And, uh, but uh, people, if you fail, then you have one more chance to learn. You have one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, sessions with the trainer. And then right. you have another chance to, to pass. And if you fail, uh, most of the companies, they will, they will send you back home. Like you cannot stay on the ship unless you pass this. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, it was it was very. Uh, I mean, it was super interesting for me to learn all this because not everybody, like I said, is required to take this test. I mean, obviously, you were training people on board, but I took it uh, on my own, and I had to pay because MPT was a private school. Uh, Why did you for, do for that? This. I was actually thinking about working on on yachts, and oh. that's one of the requirements to work on yachts. And this is like halfway through my ship. Uh, ship contract you know and they were moving some, th some things around in my in my position so i was like you know what maybe that's the end of uh, me working on ships you know let me try yachts now that i have some experience but with the yacht industry especially here in fort lauderdale which is the biggest industry in, in in the world when it comes to to uh to yachts we actually just had the biggest boat show in the world uh but i mean it's 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 a very very close uh uh i guess group of people that work on yachts Mm -hmm. And they really only only hire people that like have been with the company or been with the uh, with the crew industry in that matter. Uh, so I gave it a shot, you know, thinking I had some friends that would probably be able to talk to the owner of this mega yacht or whatever and, and just try it out. Because I heard, you know, they they uh, they, they go to special places and, you know, it's it's well paid as well. So but it's I kind of a different a world I, from 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 cruise ships. Yeah, it's, it's as, way as far different. as I, I mean, know, it's like, way oh, different. yeah, like. There's a show called Below Deck, I think, and uh, you yeah, know, I think I, it's when too I saw popular. It, I was like, man, this is nothing. It, it is popular, you know, but it's more, you know, of the uh, rich and the famous that you know rent the yachts mm. and they, they go out. And the crew, they focus on the crew, but the crew is just like about you know between five to maybe twenty or thirty crew members. Yeah. You know, which if you I don't met get few along people that on, work, on that little yeah. boat, then yeah. it's miserable, you know. And most I met of the people few people that, that work there. There, and I'm. Uh, I have to say honestly, I'm not very. Uh, uh, drawn to that career because of because of that. Same here. Same here. It's just too too small, and there's too, too you're in charge practically everything. You have to be very very qualified, and it's much more dangerous oh, yes. from from my perspective. 
and uh, in case and, of emergency, of course. In case yeah. of emergency, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I was, I was never. But and then again, you know, the the the, the crew, it, like it's, like you mentioned, it's so small that you know, if you don't get along with somebody, I mean, on the cruise ship, you have one thousand other options of people to talk to. You know, if you don't get yeah. along with uh, with somebody on board, there you're pretty much stuck with them for the entire contract or however long the charter lasts for. So. And I have to have a, I have to say on the, on the cruise ship, like you, it, it, it's a hotel. Basically, it's a hotel uh, on the ship. Literally, yes. Uh, yeah. uh, and uh, and you have all these these kind of land uh, perks or or uh, rules also that uh, you kind of I feel protected on the cruise ship on the big cruise ships. I mean, as a worker, you feel kind of protected because there's all these of rules course, and regulations, yeah. and and many people are monitoring. That's the that's the thing, you know. You don't have only like one boss. And you know, like there's like there's so many levels of management there, so so and everybody controlling everybody. So there is no. We even had special training for like uh, sexual harassment. Everybody needs to know about that. Yeah, I right? failed all that these class things. a couple times. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'm sure you oh, did. Oh, what class we're talking about? <laughs> but still, exactly. uh, But still, that's what I'm I'm telling you. I don't I don't feel like on these small yachts you you're as protected as. I mean, for for heaven's sake, you have HR HR on cruise ships, right? Which is very important. If you feel if you feel any kind of injustice or any kind of if you feel uncomfortable in any way, either on your workplace or after work or anywhere on the ship, I mean, you can report that, and somebody will take care of it. I mean, which is not the case of as course. far as I yeah. know on the small yachts. I mean. So, so I feel, I feel. Yeah, and uh, and the small yachts, the you know, it's, it's whatever the the owner pretty much picks the crew. You know, it's it's uh, and True. they usually pick you know the pretty pretty girls or whatever, and they have to be this, and, and that's the thing. You know, they 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 have the money to say who they want and who they don't want. Yeah. So I had some friends that they came on board, and and the owner was like, I don't like that girl. Send me another one, and. They can do that because it's 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 a private it's a private it's yacht a small private private they business. They have all the yeah, money in yeah. the world to say that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you could you would never be able to do that on a cruise line because you know you 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 can you, you know, get in trouble have, with you, uh, yeah you wouldn't even have to say that out loud because you'll be you'll be fired. Exactly. Yeah. You'll be fired. Yeah. I mean, and, uh, I would never got a job on a cruise ship and have they been picky with like we want you, we want you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay i i heard stories okay uh, but <laughs> i'm joking uh this is uh but still there's uh, we're getting back to these these uh words and this another funny thing that uh that it keep happening on the ships it's this deck thing i don't know if you have you noticed and this is between guests oh yeah and well, crew. That's, well that was oh. i think that was probably when we came on board like both you and i one mm. of the first things that that we had or that I had problems with is like, okay, deck zero, and then yep. upper deck, and then promenade, and then I'm like, what is this? You know, because like you said, it's a floating hotel basically, and it floor. seems like a yeah. floating city because you have about six, five thousand to up to ten thousand people, maybe now more with the new cruise ships. But I mean, it's literally a floating city, you know. So when yep. they tell you like, yeah, it's on. Uh, I still, when I go to a hotel to this date, I call it deck sometimes. Like, yeah, what deck am I on? It's like, uh, sir, you're on four. Isn't that 20. funny? I'm yeah. Like, oh, okay. So, because, I mean, and you, people, you, people, you, you carry you, this terminology all over with you. Oh, yes. But but people come on board and they cannot transfer from floor to deck, especially guests. I mean, guests are there for like a few days, so they don't have to. Of course. But they guess like, which floor is this? And then you're thinking like, oh, that's serenade deck. And, and then, it, yeah, but yeah. which floor is this? I'm like. Okay, let me count. Oh yes, so you have, to, you have, have to count. Deck, <laughs> deck four forward, or upper deck uh, forward, or midship, or back, or aft. I, and aft. I was like aft, aft. I'm like, what is aft? I'm like, oh, it's the aft. back of the ship. It's like, oh, okay. So I mean, like I said, never working or being on a ship, you know, all these words that you never heard of, you know, start becoming part of your own language. You know, it's like, oh yeah, we're we're. I'll see you at the forward, you know, on deck seven, or by promenade, or by. By the Lene or whatever they call it on other ships, you know, right. so it's, it, it becomes part of your vocabulary. And this so Lido cool. deck, and again, like, what, what's what's with the Lido deck? <laughs> I mean, come on, everybody got a Lido deck, I, and that this you know, is on, sure on all the ships. <laughs> and I'm sure there's actually a translation for that or why it was called that, but you know, I don't I know. Well, I, I accepted the Lido deck. That's the open deck, you know, where the pool is and all the food. And, and that's food. on every ship, and uh, yeah, and then mm. parties, and this is uh, and this is all always called Lido deck, and all these things, you know, the, you 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 have to learn. And there's, I'm sure, there's many many that we didn't mention, but uh, uh, 
it, it can be confusing. It really can be confusing, uh, especially for guests as well, as much as for the crew members that coming first time on on the ship. It, it's gonna take like a week, or or I would say like maybe ten days even, just to familiarize yourself with with the surroundings, with corridors, with with entrances, and where to go, and where is this, and where is that, and all these names, starboard, port side, decks, deck, this deck, that deck, safety trainings. It takes it takes a while. People think you just go like in the normal hotel, you would just go there and start working job. You only have on job training. On, in a regular hotel, you would just have like specifically right. you know and, and job I mean, training. You exit the building. You know, there's a fire. You just yeah. exit the building. You have like a. Even on a plane, you know, I have some uh, friends that are captains and, uh, you know, stewardess and, and their their emergencies are not as complex as being on a cruise ship. Because like on a cruise ship, like I said, you're there's close to 6,000, 5,000 people that yep. in case of an emergency, I guarantee you nobody's going to know what to do. And luckily some people and I've seen and I've been through some emergencies, whether it was fire, uh, uh, man overboard and things like that, that you see you know, your, your instinct kind of kicks in, you know? So I'm, I'm, like you said, I feel very safe because like during a, a fire, you know, everybody was ready in the marshalling area. All the crew members were in their muster stations and, and you look around and you're like, Holy cow, you know, you feel like proud almost, you know, to say that. Were, were you ever in this, emergency? You know? Were you, were you a ship? Uh, ever? I, I had a, I mean, I guess the, the scariest one was uh again, like with the language, you know, you had alpha code and uh, Bravo, you know, and all right. these codes that, we we all know what exactly they mean. You know, you, you I've been cruising with my family or by myself with some friends, and you hear those, and all the guests are like, "What's what are they saying?" It's like, "Oh, I know what that means. That means either somebody fell or there's a medical emergency, which they will say mm. most likely a medical emergency." But you, uh, uh, DACA code, for example, you know, it's like, "Oh, taco, but different cruise know? line, different cruise lines, they have different different codes, just so you know." Exactly, just mm. just so just so that the guests don't panic as well, you know, because if you say there's a fire on board, you know, every guest is gonna <laughs> run and go crazy. And again, you know, for example, like the one that we had was uh, uh, Alpha Code, you know, uh, Deck Twelve, you know, or by the this area, you know, so you already know exactly what's going on and what to avoid and, and, and whatnot. But luckily, you know, it was just a, uh, it was a small little fire that they put up in seconds. But again, you know, whenever something happens on the ship, there's a big investigation. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot more complicated than just like a little accident. But, at a hotel. but you didn't have any life threatening situations on, on, on board of your ships. Nothing, nothing that I felt that I felt scared. Like or... fire or collision or something like that. No, you no, no. We, that. we had a, we had a, a, a fire, fire code on board. But again, oh. by the time we got there, uh, because I, since I was a groups coordinator, I had a, a ship phone, you know, so, so many crew members have a ship phone, you know, in case of emergencies or they need to contact you. So, because I had a phone and you can't take the elevator in case of a fire, I was on deck three and they asked me to go to deck 12 by the stairs. Oh my goodness. So I was like a couple hundred were pounds you, heavier back then. <laughs> were, were you, what? I'm sorry, were you on the ship uh, at the same time as, as I, I think we were on the same ship when there was this uh, a small boat in, in distress? That we have to that we have to uh, uh, well, go I, to. Well, I had many of those. Did in you? fact, my first contract in 2014, we actually we were leaving Miami and we rescued two uh, two Cuban nationals that were trying to make their way to to Miami, and mm. uh, you know it was uh, it was kind of shocking for me because it was my first contract. It was my I think my first couple of weeks on the ship. You know, a, a, a new ship uh, from the one that I did the college. And I'm walking on promenade, which is like the, the, the floor or the deck that has all the casinos and the right, nightclub right. and the comedy room. So it's it's entertainment mm -hmm. floor, per se. So I remember walking, and there's an area where all all there is is glass, so you can see outside in the ocean. And I'm walking. I already knew some guests that knew me by name. And I'm walking there, and some lady goes like, oh, there's some guys outside, like, on, on the ocean. <laughs> and I said, like, ha-ha, like, funny, like, we're in the middle of the ocean. There's no way there's two people outside. So I started to see people kind of running towards the window. And I said, oh, my God, like, you got to be kidding me. My first two weeks here and I'm already I, I went running and I see uh, two two people in a life raft, not a life raft. It was more like a mateship uh, raft. And mm -hmm. I immediately called the bridge, which is, again, the bridge is where the uh, the officers, you know, they. It's they, the procedure they, that they, you need to follow. The yeah, there's procedure who you need to call. When exactly. You see so something. I follow, yeah. again, yeah. my training, my training was immediately K 
kicked into gear. So I called the bridge. You're welcome. I forgot the number already, but <laughs> <laughs> so I called the bridge and I said, and I said, hi, this is uh, this is GB Crew, and uh, I there's there's two people on the and again everything kicked into place. There's two. Yeah, you have to say people, where. Uh, Bravo, Bravo code, and the starboard side, uh, midship, you know, and you start giving mm-hmm. all the information, and they're like, okay, Roger that. We copy. We already call and in, inform the Coast Guard. So that was my first. Uh, I guess rescue at sea, you know, and 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 the funny thing is that uh, because I spoke Spanish, mm-hmm. I, uh, they rescued them and they brought them aboard. So what happens is, in case of this th- this happens, you know, that the two guys were actually at sea for two days, and uh, actually three oh, days or God. more. That's so terrible. they were like pretty much like done for, you know, and they had to bring them on board and I had to go translate. But that's that's something that we can actually talk about in another episode because. That's pretty interesting to to talk about, like emergencies on board and what actually cruise ships. Yeah, let's uh, do that. By maritime mm. law, by maritime law, have to have to comply with, you know. And one okay. of them is rescues at sea. So by law, they actually have to stop. You and have to. If there's exactly. somebody in distress. No exactly. matter which so ship it is, one, but no matter where, again, where the, you are. With the terminology and the to. training that 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 you guys gave us, you know, really, you really. Uh, don't realize it, but you do remember in case of emergency for the most part, you know, and, and that, that was the case. You know, I was able to say like, oh, starboard side, uh, uh, call the bridge and bravo, bravo uh, on this side. You know, that means, yes. you know, you're calling for somebody. Uh, all this, thing, all this terminology so all and all these trainings are actually life-saving uh, training. Like they're not just trainings per se, right? They, they actually save lives. If you have the knowledge, you will save, first of all, you will save your own life and then perhaps you will save other people's lives as well. So these are th- 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 there's a very, very valid reason for doing this and having this knowledge and doing these trainings. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's a, a, again, you know, and, it, and it's amazing how now, now we, we have so much knowledge of the language that we have on board. So uh, another language that we'll go into on the next episode uh, to wrap this one up is the language of the crew members because People don't realize that we have over 60 to 70 nationalities on board. So imagine, just imagine the loss in translation. How do we talk? How how crew members talk. How do we adapt? (laughs) uh, uh, Not adapt, but uh, adopt also different uh, terminologies and different slangs and curse words, of course. Because that's the first thing, you know, you meet somebody from some other country. How do you say shit? And how do you yeah. say ass? You know, and that's one of the first things that you start learning from. Those are languages. the basics so, of learning any language. The basics, exactly. <laughs> you know, and unless you get into into deep into the uh, language, but I mean that that's also another uh, a cool part about working on ships is that you know you learn that all these words and everybody ends up coming with a special vocabulary just to talk between crew members you know so we'll, yep. we'll talk about that on the next okay. episode let's let's talk about it that's going to be that's going to be interesting episode so awesome so, we'll see yeah. you on the next one okay guys yeah stay stay safe and uh we'll talk to you and see you in the next episode of ship happens all right bye see you guys ciao <laughs>